Um, hi, uh, my name is Tim Neubacher, as uh, already seen on the last slide. Um, I actually have no rights on my own pictures anymore in this department. So, um, and it, it seems I'm quite meme-worthy. So, uh, fair enough. Um, I'm uh, one of the student advisors in the department. My name is Tim Neubacher, as I said. Um, I'm also the coordinator for international affairs, responsible for students with handicaps, uh, responsible for master's admissions. So, uh, I guess that at least some of you might have already gotten in touch with me at some point. Um, I think there are some other roles and functions. I'm not sure. I'm always forgetting things, mixing it up. Anyhow, uh, before we're going to start a uh, short information, we're going to introduce new study programs and regulations from next winter term on. And um, there will be more information within the talk tomorrow. And uh, short teaser. You're going to see me several times in the three days uh, in different roles with different talks. Um, you will also find more information on our websites. There's a specific Moodle course from the departmental Moodle system um, about the new study programs. I think you will find the recording. Uh, yesterday there was, there was a big assembly of all the students. Um, you will find the recordings uh, via YouTube. So, I actually lost right on my personal pictures, definitely. Um, okay, just a teaser. Um, might be interesting for you because you may want to change the study programs later on. Um, some of you may have to switch probably, but that's some time ahead. So, hopefully not, but in case, probably look up the information and uh, come to the talk tomorrow. All right. Uh, the name of the talk, student advisory talk, is probably a bit misleading. Um, I mean, if it would be a real student advisory talk, I would have to talk about things like you should study early in the semesters, um, you should focus on your timings and whatsoever. So it's more or less a study organization talk uh, with probably some hints. Um, and we're going to rename it most likely next time. Uh, what's going to happen, I will present a short overview of the um, generic, the basic uh, computer science master because it's more or, less, uh, more or less the same for a lot of things within all the study programs. Um, then there will be a specific about the minors in this specific program, some general examination related topics, a little bit about the specialized master's programs and their specifics. Um, how to gather general, uh, um, uh, a bit more about general information like going abroad and something like that, and then how to gather more information. If you have any questions, just raise your hand and uh, I will answer some of the questions on the fly. And at the end, we will have some spare minutes to answer questions. Uh, and of course, there will be a lot of possibilities to answer questions or, or uh, um, yeah solve issues uh, later on as well. For example, I'm going to be in my external office a few minutes after my talk, but I think you all have to go to the uh, library. Um, in case you have a few spare minutes, my external office is the smoking spot outside. Okay, let's start. Um, that's the schematic scheme of the Master of Computer Science. Uh, and that's quite easy to understand. Um, you should take computer science courses in the th first three semesters, that's the idea, of course, and uh, the subjects of your minor you've selected, and then rather towards the end doing the master thesis. Of course, there are some sub-rules included as well. Um, for example, the computer science courses consist of um, 66 credits in total, 45 to 54 credits have to be conducted via the so-called Fachprüfung in German, um, and that's not translatable. Same, same holds true for uh, Studienbegleitende Leistung or Studienleistung, um, because it's misleading if you translate Studienleistung into uh, study achievements, because that's essentially everything you do for your studies. Um, so this is a basic problem we have when translating German, specifically German um, terms coming, coming down to law um, or regulations into English. Um, 
Therefore, uh, sometimes you will find German and English on the slides, uh, just to make it more clear what's actually meant. Anyhow, so the examination-related achievements, Fachprüfungen, examinations, whatsoever, um, are divided into lectures and integrated lectures in our department. Uh, and integrated lectures are essentially lectures. But probably including some seminar or lab parts or something similar. And the benefit for the lecturers is that they can change the details in every offering term on their own will. So they don't have to create a new module or whatever all the time. Um, therefore, you have to just look up what's given in the current term if you want to select one of those. But most likely, it's basically a lecture. And then at the end, there will be an oral or written exam. That should be well known. Um, you have to select the um, Fachprüfungen, the courses in this area, from three or four out of the six elective areas. I will present the elective areas, uh, areas a little later. And then you have to select, or pass actually, um, I mean only selecting is not sufficient, um, you should pass them, um, 12 to 21 credits um, in the so-called Studienleistung or Studienbegleitenden Leistung, to be more correct. Um, and these are the seminars, the labs, the project labs, similar courses, internships in teaching, a uh, very specific form where you can actually help our groups conducting lectures, courses. Um, and then there's also a form Studienarbeit that doesn't count towards the other areas because you have to conduct at least one seminar and at least one lab or project lab or similar course and there is actually no similar course. So a lab or project lab. Um, and the Studienarbeit is, uh, in, in English you would actually call it honorary thesis. Um, so it's um, uh, something like a small thesis, um, it counts towards the area but not uh, for one of the, of the other types. All those CP stated here are ECTS credits, so roughly, very roughly, 30 hours workload per credit. Um, from my personal point of view, a very stupid thing to use. Um, because it depends on your personal interest, your previous knowledge, um, on the specific course and whatsoever, um, how much work do you actually have to spend. When I did my diploma studies there was only the contact hours and that was the same for every student and everyone definitely knew, okay, it, it depends on me, my personal situation, how much I have to spend into the course to pass it. Um, so it's a bit misleading at least, um, it's more or less something to plan a study program. For that it's really helpful, um, for you it's more or less just something you can, yeah, let's say, halfway rely on, right? Um, so keep that in mind, um, and, and that's also, that's actually something from the student advisory now. So uh, take that uh, into account um, and, and try to figure out how much do you actually have to spend for the specific course, otherwise you might run into problems with your total workload in one term. A any questions to this already? Is it possible to answer questions online actually? Okay, any questions? <laughs> Ah, okay. Uh, it's actually possible to um, uh, to ask questions online as well um, via d120.de/questions. Okay, thanks. Or as I said yesterday already, if you want to ask questions, you should be here in presence. Okay, because the system broke down yesterday. Um, no questions? Okay. A short introduction into the six core areas, um, the six elective areas in the Master of Computer Science. IT security is somewhat self-explaining everything that's related to IT security. Ooh. Um, cryptography, security, network security, system security, hardware security, software security, and several other more or less related topics. 
Um, also quite self-explaining networks and distributed systems, communication networks, um, but also a little bit more about the distributed systems, IoT and whatever. Robotics, computation and computer engineering. That's a bit more complicated to understand because um, as always something that's created on a historical base, so there is no real good explanation actually. Um, we merged older areas in the now running study regulation. Um, everything included here is a technical computer science more or less. So uh, robotics but also everything that's really close to hardware for example. But not only. Um, so it's uh, mainly, I think, uh, Professor von Ströck, Professor Peters, and Professor Koch, and some of Professor Wolf, maybe, and, and Bischoff. Anyhow, so mainly robotics and everything that's hardware related. Software systems and formal basics. Uh, software systems, software engineering, um, also some software verification courses. Formal basics, uh, algorithms and um, optimization sometimes, um, something like that. Visual interactive computing, essentially computer graphics, visual computing, computer vision, everything related. And web knowledge and information processing, uh, data-centric courses like databases, um, but also uh, machine learning, AI courses, and whatsoever. That is one of the reasons why we're introducing the new study regulations and programs in winter, because several courses related to deep learning, AI, machine learning, and whatsoever are sorted into different areas like robotics, software systems, visual interactive computing, and web knowledge and information processing. And in the new study regulations, we consolidated the topics into new research areas from our department and contentially uh, matching the courses. So it's a bit easier to identify which areas to select or to steer into which area to find these uh, respective courses. Any questions to the areas? No. You have to think fast because I have to speed up a bit. Um, close timetable. Okay. Um, we recommend to conduct the master thesis rather towards the end. That sounds a bit silly, um, but you could conduct your master thesis in the first term as well. If you find a supervisor. And that's not really likely. But um, if you find a real interesting topic and you get accepted, for example, in your second or third term already, um, it's completely possible to conduct the thesis earlier. Um, it is recommended to do it rather, rather towards the end because you, you don't know yet everything about the different groups, their supervision, and so on and so forth. Specifically, the seminars and the labs are very helpful to identify with which group you might want to do a thesis, actually. Um, plus, uh, you're getting to know the content a little better, and last but not least, your interest may change over time. Um, so the recommendation is strongly to conduct the master thesis rather, uh, rather towards the end. You should start the minor as soon as possible. It is possible to conduct a minor even in less than three terms, semesters, um, but sometimes, depending on the specific minors, the courses depend on each other. So if you start too late and follow the course offering semesters, you may run into problems with the timing for your study degree, right? And you might, may extend probably your, your degree by one or two terms. Um, so start with the minor as soon as possible and the second reason is that if you made a mistake, took some of the exams, you can change your minor once. Um, and if you change it, let's say, in the second, second semester, uh, and you have to start over and over again, you will also probably extend your study duration. So therefore, directly select one and start with that in the first semester, if somehow possible. Any questions to the minors? There will be a little bit more information later on, but okay, yeah. Ah, okay, the question is whether you have to select the minors from the elective areas. No, 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 no. Um, these are the computer science areas. 
Um, you will find the overview of the miners available on our website uh, for your study regulation. Take care. Um, in the old study regulation, it was um, Anwendungsfach, uh, Application Miner. It's not even not even really translatable. Um, and in the new one, it's Nebenfach, so a real miner. Um, you will find PDFs online with contact and uh, a short overview of the structure and uh, modules. Not always up to date. Um, and you have to select that in the same way as you um, select the electives in Tucan. I will also give a short introduction uh, into Tucan and the Moodle courses, I think, tomorrow in the morning. So, um, <clears throat> before you select your electives and the minor, you won't see anything to register, actually. And you have to select that. As long as you have not taken an achievement, an, an exam or whatever, in a minor, it's not counted as selected. Um, and then you can take something else without taking the one-time joker, right? Um, as soon as you participated in one of the achievements, um, it's selected officially, and then you have only one time the chance to, ch uh, to uh, change the selection. Um, for the, also um, a teaser, um, there are no minors in the new study regulations anymore. So if you want to select something that's the closest to the new one, you should go for the minor Studium Generale. That was something we introduced in advanced new study regulations. On the other hand, every course included in one of the minors now can be transferred to the new Studium Generale area. So that's secured. So you can't make any big mistakes, but the selection will be different in the future. So um, something you may encounter in the, in the following terms probably, and then we can discuss that in detail. And I will explain that in a bit more detail tomorrow as well. Okay, fair enough. So there's something like traffic, for example, or humanities, or uh, law and economics. Um, uh, I've forgotten the rest. So some, something like that, okay? Mathematics, optimization, and something. So if you're really into math. Okay, like me. <laughs> okay, any further questions on the minors? <laughs> okay, um, I'm also the coordinator for international affairs in the department. Um, so it is possible to go abroad for one or two terms during your studies. It may extend your studies actually a little. Uh, that's quite common um, if you go abroad. Um, the problem is for all the students that were not enrolled already in our university, approximately one year or one and a half year lead time for your stay abroad. So you should apply for stay abroad as early as possible. Um, Problem is that there's only, uh, I think there are slides later on anyways, um, there's only one application period for all places, um, for all possibilities, and in May there will be a little one for the leftover places in the Erasmus Plus system, and there are not many places available anymore. Um, so most likely the next option for you is to apply in November meaning that your earliest stay abroad will be next year winter term. On the other hand, so many benefits going abroad, so um, extending your studies by one or two terms doesn't matter. Switching the head again. Um, any questions for a stay abroad already? Okay, the question is whether you have to hand in the language certificates required for the different partner universities or, or uh, study programs. Um, already at the application period here at the department or university, no. Um, the earliest, it depends on the partner universities. So sometimes while applying at the partner university later on, uh, sometimes when you just drop by there, and some never ask. Any further questions on that?
Okay, the question is how many credits you can achieve during a study abroad? Depends. Um, depends on the course offers of the partner university, your own selection, um, depends on your own will, probably. Um, there are some criteria um, for uh, scholarships, for example, Erasmus Plus grant. Um, you have to select at least one course. Um, it doesn't matter how much you actually transfer at the end, usually, uh, besides for external scholarships, for example. Um, it's not easy to cover a whole semester by numbers, so 30 ECTS credits is, at least in the first term staying abroad, a bit hard, because you want to do some, some cultural things as well. You want to see the area, the, the city, the country, whatever. So we actually usually see somewhat between 15 and 25 credits when students are coming back. Um, and that's completely fine, but that's also one of the reasons why you m most likely extend your studies by one term when going abroad. Right? Um, but you can explain the same quite well. And you have a lot of benefits. So, depends on your own interest and your own decision, let's say. Okay, any further questions? I'm quite fast. A lot of time to, an uh, to answer questions later on. Okay. As I already said, uh, minor subject. You have to conduct at least 24 credits. And now a short uh, personal information. During student advisory um, leads to the situation that several students are dropping by asking which course can I select to reach exactly the required amount of credits. Don't, please. Um, take everything you're interested in, even though you may exceed the credit points required for the areas. It makes it way easier for you to pass the credits if you're really interested in the course, in the content. Um, it feels actually as, as you would conduct less workload, even though you may actually conduct a little bit more. Um, and it's not easy to reach the exact amount of credits everywhere. So um, forget, forget about that, plus if you exceed an area, um, there's a best of ranking of grades. So everything will be stated completely at your final documents, but only the best credits required and all the minimums def, uh, defined will be taken into account for the CGPA calculation, so for the overall grade. Right? So even though you exceed something, or in <laughs> the, the baddest, uh, best translation, overbook, uh, <laughs> Uh, totally wrong. Okay, forget about overbooking. Um, if you exceed the areas, it may actually benefit for your overall grade as well. Um, as I said, there is a website for the minors, not always up to date. If you have any questions, just let us know. Um, it can only be changed once after taking an examination achievement. Um, you can get in touch with me if you have some general questions um, or you need some general advice via the email address of the student advisory service in our department. And if you need advice on the content, you will most likely find someone in the PDF. If not, get in touch with us. But of course, we can't help you on the content of, for example, mechanical engineering or something. Um, so you will have to find someone in this department then to ask your questions about the detailed content and everything. Examination related topics. That's important. So for most of the running master's programs, there is no need to provide an examination plan for elective areas or the elective courses. The only exception currently is the study program Autonomous Systems, Autonomous Systeme. Because this is a very interdisciplinary study program, including a lot of electrical engineering courses and mechanical engineering courses, it's not easy to see for students coming from one of these areas, which might be a good combination of courses to either get a job afterwards or to actually pass them with good grades and whatsoever. So this is the basic idea for the explanation plan. Um, the registration, though, is done via TUCAN. So you have to create an examination plan, you have to get that signed um, by the coordinator of the study program, Professor von Schrück, who's always advising you as well on the combinations. 
um, but you have to register the modules, courses, and examinations in Tucan as well. This is always the leading tool, even though it shouldn't be. Anyhow, um, you will find uh, information about the examinations on the website of the examination office, um, the Studienbüro, um, also something that's not really translatable in a good way. Um, and also there will be a short overview, a slide overview, how to register correctly in Tucan and so on. The examination plan tool that's required to create the examination plan. Um, I'm sorry in advance. I'm responsible for this tool and it's outdated. It's still developed in aspect oriented Java. Anyone ever heard something about aspect oriented Java? See, um, I actually have some students currently working on a new version. Um, it hopefully will be available throughout the summer term, uh, probably rather towards the end. Um, so you have to use the old tool so far. Um, it's not always complete, um, but you can just add courses on individual base via uh, acknowledgements in the areas. Um, if you have any questions, ah, some of the modules and courses are not displayed in the up-to-date version. Um, we have a little bit of problem with the database in behind and the virtual machine, actually the server as well. It's going to <coughs> dissolve already technically. Um, so it's, it's really time to change it to a new version. Um, anyhow, so um, no need for any urge. You should actually create an examination plan before registering to the modules, courses, and so on in your first term. It's not a problem to do that later on. And compared to the examination plan system that uh, was available in Tucan previously, um, in other departments, it's always possible to change it on your own will. So at any time, you can just create a new one um, and get the next one signed by the coordinator. So that's, that's not the problem. Um, and usually one term shouldn't cause any problems, right? Um, plus, if you run into problems, and that's going to be introduced tomorrow, there's a follow-up study program called <coughs> Autonomous Systems and Robotics, which is essentially the same, but um, with electives and m uh, mandatory elective areas. And you have to conduct a specific amount of credits in the mandatory elective areas. Um, and for this study program, no examination plan is required anymore. So even though you might run into problems, you could just switch the study programs later on and then do your own combination if you want to. On the other hand, I highly recommend to get in touch with Professor von Strück then in order to discuss the combination as well, right? Okay, um, it's only possible to access the examination plan tool um, from within the university's network, so use uh, VPN or uh, be here in presence because it's also not really secure anymore and that was the only possibility to secure it a little bit. Um, please don't judge. And personally, I hate programming as hell. I can verify whether a given program is doing what it should do, I, I'm really fond of automata theory and something like this. Programming was the hell during my study. Um, so I'm I always in need for students doing this job for me. Okay. But coming back to the specific explanation related topics re relevant for every student. Um, I already mentioned the so-called Fachprüfungen. So the in lectures, integrated lectures, more li most likely. <clears throat> You only have three attempts per Fachprüfung. And you only have one so-called supplementary oral exam, mündliche Ergänzungsprüfung, which is part of the third attempt, or to be formally correct, the second repeat attempt. Um, if you fail an examination-related achievement, an exam, Fachprüfung, including probably the supplementary or exam, you will be ex-matriculated. Don't. 
probably don't even take it because there are ways to get around. Not infinitely often, but at least for a lot of them. I can explain that if it occurs that you have to take a third attempt or a second repeat attempt. Actually, you will be invited to a talk <laughs> on my behalf um, exactly for this situation in case it happens and of course it won't happen for you. So, um, a registration is required for every achievement. Uh, you, will s you will get to know that tomorrow during my talk on Tukan. <laughs> um, it's it's stressy and it's, it's stupid, um, but you have to really, it's register, yes, yes, course, register, yes, yes, achievement, yes, yes, really, yeah, yeah, I want to register. I don't know how many clicks I have to do here. And that was only one module. Um, so, uh, but you have to do the same. If you're not registered, you can't take the exam at the end. So make sure that you're registered in due time. Um, probably another hint. <clears throat> make screenshots of your registration just to prove that you have been registered at some point. I'm not explaining why. Um, okay, um, you can withdraw from an uh, exam or for any, from any achievement actually um, up to seven days before it takes place. Exception of course is if you're unable to take the exam, so if you're ill for example, um, then you have to submit a medical certificate, um, I think within three days after the exam took place, um, via the examination office, the Studienbüro. So before all the necessary conditions for the graduations are fulfilled, that's what I already mentioned, one can remove one open, and open means yet not passed, module um, or subject uh, from each area. So, in every study program, in our department, um, as, as an example, probably the mass computer science again, one from IT security, one from robotics, one from networks and distributed systems. Um, the idea behind is that every student can make a mistake, right? Um, so, you don't know the professors, you don't know the lecturers, you don't know the content, so you, you might actually just make a mistake. And then you fail the module, or the exam, to a module, actually. And by legal base, you're actually forced now to finish it. And finishing means passing it or finally failing the study program. Hmm. So, uh, we introduced the idea to the university. It could be a good idea to allow students to remove some of them. So, we were hoping for something like in 25% of the cases or something. And now we have three possibilities in our general examination terms. It's not possible to remove an open subject. It's possible once plus eventually if there are very good reasons for a second removal, infinitely often. The first and the last ones, not a good idea <laughs> from our point of view. So infinitely often means that you, a lot of students will extend their studies without, actually, uh, without that it's actually required because you could probably just pass the exam with a little bit more time and whatever. Um, on the other hand, not allowing any removal, also not a good idea because, as I already said, our idea is you just may have making a mistake. So, um, the only option left for our department was to select the other option, once plus eventually once. Before all conditions for your study programs are covered. That's a teaser. In case you have more than one open subject in one of the areas, probably just get in touch with me. Okay, uh, and there are actually almost no good reasons for a second removal. So formally, um, I think the only thing that could apply is that you actually didn't know while taking the exam that you were not able to take the exam without you knowing. It can happen, for example, if you get new, um, uh, if you if you have some chronic disease and you get new drugs for that, um, and uh, there are some 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 problems you don't know in advance. I think. It happened, tw happened twice the last 10 years. So 
a very rare situation and I think that was the only really good reason. But as I said, we will try to solve your issues if they occur at all. Okay, a short, yeah. Yes, exactly. So that's the generic. No, 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 exactly. So that, that's the uh, legal base, um, first of all. Um, yeah, why so ever? Okay, the question was, uh, thank you. <laughs> I missed it already. <laughs> I have to repeat um, the questions from the auditorium uh, for the stream and the recording, and I'm always missing that. So yesterday, it was that the whole time through. Um, okay, the question was um, whether it's required to pass an exam to finalize it um, when uh, taken once for a module. Ah, something that's very specific probably in our department. Um, early on it was called the so-called mini-module system. Uh, we're not allowed to use this term anymore, but I'm not sure how to, how to communicate it in a better way. Um, so in our department, you will find um, one course included in the module, only one usually. So one module, one course, one achievement. The achievement may consist of different parts, but that's our system. Um, and that in other departments, in other universities, you usually have bigger modules with several courses and you can select from the courses. In our department, um, you actually have to select a lot of modules, making the registration even more pain in the ass. Um, on the other hand, um, it makes it easier to plan ahead, to calculate the workload and whatsoever. Um, probably a bit outdated, but we'll see how it develops over time. That's the current situation. Okay, A any questions from on online participants? No? Good. Is, is there actually someone watching? Okay, cool. <laughs> Four to seven. Ooh. <laughs> Let's hope that the technique's not breaking down. Okay, um, specialized master's programs. Um, besides the computer science bachelor and master program, uh, we introduced some specialized programs, uh, focusing more on specific topics or areas. I already mentioned the autonomous system study program. Um, that's really related to robotics, autonomous systems, also a lot about deep learning AI as well, consisting as well um, of courses from mechanical and electrical engineering. We have the study program distributed software systems, um, software engineering, networks, distributed systems as a combination. The basic idea was um, to learn how to develop software, bigger software systems for in the distributed way or for distributed systems uh, and big network solutions. IT security is again almost self-explaining um, that's related on computer security. Um, the internet and web-based system is just mentioned here to be complete. No one can actually be enrolled at the moment in the first term because we already closed the study program by end of last summer term. Um, and there's the study program Visual Computing um, that, that is centered on computer graphics, computer vision, uh, graphical uh, uh, image processing and everything related to that. You will find more information including the contact to the coordinators in case you have any contentious questions on the websites. Um, there's websites for all our study regulations and study programs on the department websites. Please don't use these um, overviews of the central advisory service or the central websites. Not every detail is included in this overview. It helps to identify basically what you're interested in whatsoever. If you want to get to know the study regulations in detail and to make sure that you actually complete and cover all the rules and criteria look up the study and examination plan, Studien und Prüfungsplan, that's part of the study regulation. You will find that on our websites. Or in the Satzungsbeilage, and I'm not even sure how to translate that. Um, 
on the websites of the university. So that it's it's not really complicated to understand. It's a table form, right? Um, but you will see all the credit point criteria. You will also find all the minima criteria and maxima criteria for the different types of courses and so on and so forth. Um, way more secure. Okay. Um, besides that, I'm not really much of help for the specialized programs, but I'm already a teaser for the talk tomorrow. Um, the internet and web-based systems, not, not really uh, interesting for you, most likely. Um, but we're going to close the study programs, autonomous systems, uh, distributed software systems, and visual computing by end of the summer term. Um, that leads to the situation that you can finalize it uh, until uh, winter 25, 26, I think, yes. Um, so the, 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 um, the duration for the study program plus two terms uh, currency, so six terms. Afterwards, you will be exmatriculated. But, just as an example, we're introducing autonomous systems and robotics already. So there will be possibilities to switch study programs if you may run into problems. All of you should be able, hopefully, to finalize it within the given time frame. Uh, but if not, there will be possibilities where you can just transfer to um, without a big loss of credits. Probably a little, but not a big loss of credits. You covered. All right. Um, the examinations. As already said, there's an examination plan required for the Autonomous System Master Program. Um, there's um, a slide overview of how to register in, in Tucan and whatsoever. So it's essentially the same for all study programs. You have to register that. Um, student advisory. We can advise you on all the formal criteria, the general things. Um, we're not really able to advise you on the content of every study program. I focused on IT security as well during my study, so I'm definitely able to give some advice on, on the IT security program. Um, but for example, not for the distributed software system. Um, probably the network area. Um, so there are coordinators for the study program, fellow students in the study programs, and this is definitely the best idea to get in touch with if you have questions on the content, the course selections, and whatsoever. Da, 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 da. That's already done. Okay, any questions on specialized master programs? Who's, who's actually enrolled in a specialized master program? Okay, fair enough. And you have no questions? <laughs> Good for me. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the question was um, whether it's uh, really required to enroll into a specialized master program. In the new study regulation coming up in next winter, um, there's a lot of flexibility choosing the courses, selecting your individual um, track, let's say. Um, depends. Um, first of all, you're starting now, right? So, um, and you're conducting at least one term before the new study regulations are actually coming up. So it might depend on your personal timing as well. Um, on the other hand, if, let's say, two students or graduates actually then apply for the same job, and it's related to IT security, it may be the case that if there's IT security as a name on your certificate, that you have a little bit of a bad chance to get the job. Probably. Um, on the other hand, they will most likely, or hopefully, look into the, the courses you actually took, right? And if you have selected the same combination, it shouldn't make any difference. Um, on the other hand, it may actually be a bit hindering if you apply for something else then. Um, so a specialist master's program makes sense if you're really interested in this specific field. And there is, of course, one difference, um, no minor. 
so you can take more computer science courses or related courses in this direction. It's not really much, 24 credits roughly, um, so coming down to four to five or four to six courses actually. Um, it will also be probably a bit easier to find a PhD position in this specific field if you want to go in this direction afterwards, right? So there may be some, some benefits, but it depends on the individual situation and plans, um, not really based on the course selection, besides the difference between minor and whatever. On the other hand, in a lot of the specialized master programs, you can take courses from different areas a lot, right? Um, so you should really be interested in the topic of your uh, specialized master program, um, and it should actually always be the intrinsic motivation that counts, right? And if you're not sure, you can just take up two master's programs, transfer some of the credits in between, and just get two degrees. The recommendation here is to have a discrepancy of at least 30 up to 60 credits, roughly, in order to explain why you actually conducted two degrees. Um, if you apply, let's, we had that yesterday already, you could actually study autonomous systems in autonomous systems and robotics in parallel. And then you would get two degrees at the end that are essentially the same besides a five to six credit Studium Generale area. That really doesn't make sense. <laughs> Not at all. Um, but if you take, for example, um, the Master of Computer Science with a minor, and then you're conducting some other seminars and labs in the different program, probably a few courses as well in the Computer Science different to the Specialized program, you will directly reach somewhat between 30 and 60 credits difference, and then you have a lot of explanations, right? Why have you conducted two study programs with only 40-something credits difference? Well, I did the same because of one, two, three, four. Um, makes sense. It's up to you, right? Um, but always try to reflect why you're doing it, how you could explain that afterwards. Um, most students taken up two or more study programs on the same level, and I think the, the, the maximum was five out of our six master's programs. Max, doch, ja, Max müsste fünf. Not really sure, five, I think. Um, most students only finish one, probably two, right? Probably. Um, because at some point you will be done searching for a job, earning money, uh, your life will change, your interest to get the other degree will uh, definitely decrease, and at some point you will just drop out. That's, that's quite common. Um, you can just keep the option open, enroll into several study programs, um, figure it out over some time, and decide later on, but always make sure to reflect that in a good way. Okay. Any further questions? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, the question is whether you can do that not only in parallel, but um, behind each other. Yes, of course, right? Um, on the other hand, we are closing study programs. So this example was about visual computing. We're closing the visual computing study programs, so it's not possible to enroll um, anymore, actually. There will be an English computer science master with a specialization on visual computing. Um, so yeah, sure, you can do that um, after each other as well. And you can even, even uh, have a break in between. So uh, usually it's not a problem to transfer credits uh, within the next five years. Um, not many problems within 10 years. After 10 years, you definitely have to look into the content, whether it has changed significantly, right? Um, so you have some spare time to think it through and decide upon that. On the other hand, the longer you wait after you graduated, the less likely that you actually will finish the second one. But what we already uh, had in the past, students enrolling in the second one just to take some of the courses uh, more as an, mm, let's say, a training 
on the job as well, or parallel to the job, right? So that might make sense as well. Any further question? Okay. That's essentially what I just said. <laughs> Anything else I've forgotten? Nah. Okay, transferable is, of course, everything that's included in both study programs, or in every study program, right? Um, or, if not included, if it at least contentially fits into one of the areas. I mean, you can't transfer, for example, an IT security course into the autonomous system master's program because it's just not included and all the areas are defined in a different way, not matching anything, right? So, that would be a good explanation to conduct two degrees. And now something that might cause some questions. Auflagen, imposed conditions. Um, some of you may have gotten Auflagen, imposed conditions for their studies. The requirement to pass exams from our bachelor's program within the first year or in part-time studies, two years, uh, in topmost two uh, attempts each. Um, you have to register the same via TUCAN as well, of course, but um, you can't register to every imposed condition in a good way, first of all, and secondly, not if the modules and courses were offered in the previous term. So every imposed condition coming from the first year of our bachelor's program in the study regulation of 2015 has to be registered via our examination office. Because otherwise, you will have to achieve specific points in the exercises and labs in order to be allowed to participate in the exam. That doesn't make sense if we impose this condition for you, right? There are hidden modules available in TUCAN. Other students can't see, or actually no student can see. Um, and the examination office has registered you for the same, so you can definitely take the exam at the end. We highly recommend to follow the exercises and labs anyways, because otherwise the chances to pass these exams is definitely reduced. Um, and again, if you get an imposed condition, for example, and the course was uh, held in the winter term, you're of course allowed to take the exam this term, but you can't register on your own because you can't register to the module because it was only offered in the winter term get in touch with the examination offers and get registered for the same. And then you can register for the exam on your own again. That's the basic idea here. Um, the imposed conditions can be changed under specific circumstances. For example, we just probably made a mistake while checking your documents when applying. Um, we're receiving several hundred applications each term. And it's going to increase with the new study regulations a lot. We're introducing an English AI master, so we're expecting at some point three to uh, 4,000 applications per term. Guess who's responsible for reading the course description handbooks? <laughs> so it might actually be a mistake, right? Um, if you think that you covered the criteria or actually also the content of an imposed condition already, get in touch with me. And then we can cross-check that again, and uh, if we made a mistake, we'll just drop the imposed condition. But please really verify that on your own before you get in touch. Second reason to change the imposed condition, um, if you're not happy with the imposed condition. So if you, for example, in some, some cases, it's just about the amount of credits you covered, matching the uh, subject-specific prerequisites for the master program, the specific one. Um, in computer science, you, you're required to cover at least 60 ECTS credits matching. Coming, for example, from business administration um, and, and computer science, um, there's usually an amount of roughly 20 to 5 to 20 credits missing compared to that. So you have to conduct an imposed condition just in the size of the missing credits. And it, it's not allowed to already have that covered in the bachelor's program, but there will be some possibilities 
to cover the missing credits as well. And if you're not happy with the one you got, get in touch with me and we can discuss which ones are still possible. And as long as all the criteria are given afterwards, we can just change the imposed condition as well. So, on the other hand, <clears throat> we are imposing conditions in the following way. What's possible in the first attempt in a good way? What's not requiring any other courses from our bachelor's program contentially? So the change of imposed conditions may lead to the situation that it's harder for you to pass the exam. On the other hand, I don't know about your personal knowledge and interest. Right? Um, so if you're an expert in, in, for example, technical computer science, but you have not covered the same on your transcript while applying, you could change to a different imposed condition, pass it with uh, no effort at all, probably, um, but that's something we can't take into account in advance. So if you want to discuss your imposed conditions, get uh, in touch with me via the advisory service email address. Um, be warned, um, during the orientation week, I have not much spare time, plus I've taken holiday next week. Good plan. Um, so it might, besides Wednesday, because I have to take an exam then. Uh, not, I have to give an exam, sorry. Um, taking an exam. Um, so it might take a bit to answer, right? Um, I'll try to answer questions on imposed conditions as soon as possible and before actually all the other requests coming in um, because it, it actually affects your plan for the term probably. Um, hopefully if you get in touch with me during this and next week you will all receive an answer the week after. Okay? If not, get in touch, let the students council know um, that I'm not answering. Um, Kick me if you see me. I don't, really, it's completely fine. I'm always overworked and underpaid, so um, I know how the situation is. I did my studies here as well. Um, I'm definitely not angry if someone just nags and nags and nags, okay? Some others will. Don't, don't try to do the same with professors, please. Um, but nagging me is completely fine. All right, any questions on imposed conditions? Ah, ah, thanks. Uh, how to register? Um, yes, yes. Um, uh, via Tucan. Um, as I already explained, everything you can't register on your own or you shouldn't register on your own via the examination office and they will register you. You will find the courses via the additional course area because all our course offers, all our modules are offered for any student in the university. Um, and you have to steer into, I think, the area of mandatory courses. And then you can see what's actually offered from your imposed condition in this term. If you can see it under the registration area in Tucan, register for it, right? Besides the ones from the first year now bachelors. Everything else has to be registered um, via the examination office. Um, the question is how to be sure um, to register the right course. Well, as I already said, um, one module, one course, one achievement. And in your, um, in your admission letter from the department, you will find the imposed conditions, including a module number. If you can't find your admission letter, look it up online. If you can't see it online, I have no idea. <laughs> Now you can always get one from, from me as well, right? Um, because I'm the one creating the same. So, okay. Any further questions on imposed conditions? No. Part-time studies. Also interesting. Um, if uh, you cover one of the reasons, and there are several reasons available for part-time studies, like employability, um, freelance activities, uh, disabilities also, uh, committee activities in the university, you can request a part-time study. Hmm. What's the consequence for your studies? Um, you have one more year to pass the imposed conditions, but still the same amount of attempts, legal base. Um, 
and you have twice the um, time for the master thesis or the thesis in general. And that's it. Everything else exactly the same as, as if you're not enrolled in a part-time studies. For the, the, the last part again? Okay. Um, the question is whether it affects the, the maximum duration for the studies, I think, um, and, the, and the new study regulations and so on. Um, actually not. Um, so if we're closing a study program, um, this deadline is running, regardless whether the students are enrolled um, via part-time studies or not. Um, it just helps students, first of all, with the two um, effects I already mentioned, mentioned plus it may be the case that you don't want to explain why it took you a bit longer to study, for example, um, and in that way you may get around, right? Um, ah, uh, I'm not sure whether... No, I don't. Um, I'm using that slide. Um, if, you, if you have a disability, if you have a chronic disease, um, any handicap, um, you can get in touch either with uh, Yasmin Bogart, our study coordinator, in the department or myself. Um, we are the responsible people for students with handicaps and it's usually possible, depending on the, on the details, um, to get some, some help actually. Um, for example, extension of time for written exams um, and so on. So there are possibilities, there's a process, um, there are uh, certification letters for the same and so on and so forth. It's not taking that many time, um, that much time. Uh, to create the same and so on, uh, but we have to follow the process. So if you think that you may have a handicap, or if you're sure that you have a handicap for your studies, get in touch with one of us, okay? That might be really helpful. Um, the part-time studies will at least be available for the new study regulations and study programs as well. Any further questions? Ah, and responsible is the service center, not our department. So details on part-time studies, I don't know, right? Um, get in touch with the right people. Okay, already mentioned the stay abroad, very positive for your own uh, CV. If specifically, if you want to go for a PhD, a doctorate afterwards, um, you should start language courses and the preparation time um, somewhat before, actually quite early. It's not always easy um, to get into the courses and whatever. Um, it's also possible to conduct a thesis or minors abroad as well. And this could, for example, enhance the credits you can bring back from your stay abroad. Uh, only one application period for everything. Um, there's a website for international affairs as well in our department as central uh, facilities. Um, you will find the partner universities online via the International Relations and Mobility Office uh, websites. Um, and that's something I suggest in general. Just flip through all the systems and websites you will find, get used to it, um, it's always helpful. There will be a slide, I think the last one. Um, right, um, Erasmus Plus places in May, uh, not many left uh, currently, but let's see, probably some students don't want to go abroad anymore. Um, probably already got some new places abroad. I'm not sure, I lost track a bit in the last few weeks. Um, very specific, for some of the programs, there exist double degree programs. Um, if you're interested in conducting a double degree program in the IT security, there's one with the Technical University in Vienna um, with the Software System and Formal Basics Master's program. Um, there are some double degrees in France for the Computer Science Master. And that's actually more or less it at the moment. Um, but if you're interested in one of the double degree programs, directly get in touch with me as the coordinator for international affairs via the uh, email address used for these issues. Um, because you have to speed up everything a little bit more. Um, and for the double degrees, it's possible to apply in May as well. And, um, but 
as, as you have to take care that the courses on both sides are matching to get the degree in, 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 in the time frame given, um, you have to plan ahead a little bit more, right? And we can, of course, support you with that and, and check whether it makes sense or not. Uh, the question was whether there's access to the presentation afterwards. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Das gehört zu dem Vortrag hier. Ah ja, genau. Not only to the slides, um, but also to this talk. Uh, it's recorded. And another meme. Okay. Why it's important to get used to all the websites and systems and whatever. You can find news on the websites of the student advisory service, on the websites of the respective study programs, via the Discord servers, via Toucan, via email, via I don't know where. I can almost guarantee that every important information can be found somewhere. The problem is we're not telling you where. And you have to get used to it. Um, in German, there's the so-called Selbstinformationspflicht der Studierenden. Um, <laughs> which is actually a security measurement for us, um, so we ha don't have to think about where to spread information. Um, but we're trying to spread it as uh, broad as possible. On the other hand, sometimes you will find information in Moodle courses, sometimes on the websites, sometimes on the central websites, on our departmental websites, and whatsoever. Um, try to get a system for yourself working out. Right. Um, so, depending on what you're studying, where you're, what you're interested in, and whatsoever, try to figure out where to most likely find the relevant information, and from time to time look it up. A previous student once uh, wrote a small uh, program, uh, check in the relevant websites um, every day, and if there was a change, um, he got an email from his own program. Hey, there's a change on the websites for stay abroad. Look it up. Um, probably a bit overhead. Um, on the other hand, why not? I mean, you're computer science students, right? Um, try to get a system, try to get used to everything so you don't miss any important information. If it's really urgent and important, you most likely will get either a two-card message or an email, right? Um, but that's happening only in very rare cases. You can get in touch with the examination office if you have any questions um, on Monday till Thursday via phone. That's at least what they are stating on the websites currently. On the other hand, I saw a student running into the office uh, today as well. Um, I think you can at least agree upon appointments. Um, not sure whether they are available in person already again. Um, they have consultation hours also via Zoom on Wednesdays. You will find the Zoom links and the examination-related topic information on their websites. Um, <clears throat> you can ask for an appointment with me via Beratung at. Um, I'm planning to offer some open consultation hours again from somewhat in the summer term. Um, but yeah, not finalized yet, the plan. So nothing to state here on the slide. Um, you can, of course, ask your questions, first of all, via email. And I think uh, it's necessary to do, well, helpful to discuss that in person. I will suggest a personal appointment as well. Um, your first starting point, Berato and Informatik, always a good idea. Or if you see me outside in my external office, just ask, right? Um, same for international affairs. I think that's it with the slides. <coughs> a little slower than I expected and hoped for. On the other hand, we already answered a lot of questions. So, any open questions? Anything I haven't mentioned on my slides that is probably interesting? All overwhelmed, right? Too much information. Information overload. No. Okay. Ha. Huh. You just have to wait a uh, sufficiently long time. Okay, yeah. Okay. 
Um, okay, so the question was um, with the upcoming new study regulations, um, if students select a minor uh, at the moment, will they be able to follow the minor till the end or have they to switch at some point? Um, you can always stay enrolled in your old regulation, right? Um, so we're not forcing students to switch the study regulations. Um, therefore, you always should always be able to follow your study structure as well. Um, and these are courses and modules offered by the other departments. So it actually more or less depends on their course offers, whether you can take a specific course in the future, but the minors will still exist in the currently uh, offered study regulation and uh, with a given structure, and you can definitely follow the same. I can't guarantee, but it was never possible, that you will find specific content in the future as well, right? Um, but of course, yeah, you can definitely finish your minor if you select one now. Uh, same holds true for every other area, actually. So um, we're not forcing anyone to switch study programs or regulations. And if you're enrolled now, besides the ones closed by end of the summer term, you can, can just finish it in your study regulation, right? Um, so <coughs> chillax. I actually got a tea from the Students' Council as a small present, I think, uh, for, for Christmas. Uh, I'm not sure. A uh, chill Marty. Not sure why. So, but it's tasty. Okay. Anything else? Okay. I mean, you know how to get in touch with me now. I expect some questions later on. Have a good day. Have a good start. If you have questions, just get in touch. Enjoy the sun. See ya.